Republic of Mexico is a mountainous country which lies between Central America and the United States. From the narrow strip of lowlands along the coast, high mountains rise nearly 9,000 feet surrounding our high central plateau. Our capital city has the same name as our country, Mexico. But to avoid confusion, people often call the capital Mexico City. Its oldest churches and many buildings date as far back as the Spanish conquest, over 400 years ago. Under Spanish rule, Mexico City was the metropolis of the Western Hemisphere. But even before that time, it had been a great city as the capital of the ancient Aztec Empire. Many of us are descendants of the Aztecs, the Indian people who once ruled in Mexico. Mexico City is built on land that was once a swamp. In Aztec times, the city itself rose on an island in the middle of a lake. Today, the soft ground is a problem for architects and engineers. Even modern buildings tend to sink in the swampy earth. Mexico City is the second largest Spanish-speaking city in the world. It is one of the great cultural and economic centers of America. The museums and art galleries are visited by many of our people, even those who live in small farming villages. School children from rural communities are often taken on trips to our capital. Visitors from the lowlands are not accustomed to the thin mountain air of the capital. The city is situated over 7,000 feet above the level of the sea. As a result, the climate here is usually cool, even though Mexico City is in the tropics. The newest homes have been built in the suburbs of the city. The designs of some of the houses are based on Spanish colonial architecture. Many of these new homes have been designed to get as much sunlight and fresh air as possible. Mexico City is connected with other parts of the country by good roads. The Pan American Highway runs directly through the Valley of Mexico where the capital is situated. This bowl-shaped valley on the high plateau is surrounded by towering mountains. The Valley of Mexico is so important to the life of the country that it is often called the heart of Mexico. The valley floor is comparatively level. As in other tropical lands, there are only two seasons, a wet season and a dry season. The climate in this high valley is mild, like spring weather in countries located in the temperate zone. The valley is hemmed in by mountains. Among them, the peaks of two great volcanoes stand out. One of them is Popocatépetl. Next to it is Ixtaccíhuatl. These old Indian names mean the smoking mountain and the white woman. For many centuries, the land in the broad valley below the peaks was enriched by lava and volcanic ash. This has made the soil suitable for growing crops. One of the many farming villages within sight of Popocatépetl and the neighboring mountain is Teseyuca. Like almost all Mexican villages, it is built around an old Spanish church. The houses of Teseyuca are low dwellings built of adobe bricks. Adobe is the name of the clay used in making the bricks of which most of the houses in rural Mexico are built. Small villages like Teseyuca are often called adobe villages. One of the adobe houses in Teseyuca is the home of a boy named Ramon. He and his family are farmers. Like all Mexicans, Ramon's father and mother and their children are courteous to elderly people. When grandfather discusses the day's work, everyone pays careful attention. Because grandfather is oldest and wisest, he is the head of the family. The help of everyone in the family is needed to make a living from their small farm outside the village. Except for grandfather, the whole family usually leaves for the fields soon after daybreak.
Old though he is, grandfather also works hard. While the family is away in the fields, he helps make the sun-baked adobe bricks, which are used to build the walls of most of the dwellings in rural Mexico. Grandfather and his helpers mix the clay, called adobe, with water. Chopped grass and straw are added to give it strength. Then the wet clay is molded into blocks. Afterwards, the blocks are dried in the sun. The people of Teseyuca elect the local officials. The mayor is called the Presidente. He is an important person. And of course, he knows everyone in town. In the grocery of Teseyuca, there is an electric corn mill. Corn can be ground many times faster this way than by hand. But corn has to be ground between millstones, where there is no electricity. When dried corn has been mixed with lime water and ground into dough, it is ready to be made into tortilla, the bread of most of our people. The storekeeper used to be the Presidente before the present mayor was elected. The welfare of every member of the community, especially of the children, is the main concern of the officials in our villages. As with most Mexicans, politeness is a habit with the Presidente of the Seyuca. He takes great pride in the work people do, like the weaving of serapes. These are the beautifully patterned blankets that are worn as cloaks by most of our country people. This kind of weaving has been handed down from the old Indian people and is still carried on throughout Mexico. The design and texture of the serape indicates the village or section of our country where it was made. In Tesayuca, as in most other Mexican villages, the farms are outside the town. All kinds of cactus plants can be found growing in the Valley of Mexico. More than three-fourths of our people make their living from agriculture. Most of the land in the southern part of the plateau is used for growing field crops. The volcanic soil is rich, even though stony. The summers, which are hot and rainy, are favorable for raising corn. Corn, or maize, was the principal crop of the ancient Indian peoples of this region, who were the ancestors of many Mexican families. Today, corn is still the principal food of most of the people of Mexico. The ancient Indian method of planting corn was simply to make a hole with a stick and drop in a few kernels. Ramon's family plants it almost the same way today. A shallow furrow is made with the old plow. Ramon's mother sows the grain in holes made with a spade. Many of our small farms are on hillier land than the farms near Teseyuca. Most of them are not suitable for the use of machinery, even if the farmers could afford it. When his land is worked by old-fashioned methods, the farmer is able to raise only enough food for his own family. Some livestock is raised in the Valley of Mexico, although most of our cattle and sheep are to be found in the ranch lands and grazing areas much farther north. Sheep, cattle, horses, goats and donkeys were unknown in Mexico until they were brought from Europe by the conquering Spaniards. The livestock found plenty to eat here, and the herds thrived. Within a short time, cattle raising became very profitable. For the last three centuries, the donkey, or burro, has been the chief beast of burden for Mexican farmers. Ramon's father has several of the little animals to help with the farm work. An adequate supply of water is needed to raise large herds of cattle. The streams in the Valley of Mexico fill up in the rainy season. The dairy cattle of the region near Teseyuca are raised to produce milk for Mexico City, which is not far away. However, 
most of the land around Tesayuca is used for growing crops. Consequently, livestock raising is less important in this area than crop raising. The maguey cactus is cultivated in great quantities on the high plateau. The pulque gatherer sucks the sap from the heart of the plant into a hollow gourd and empties the juice into a pigskin bag. This sweetish liquid, after it has been allowed to ferment, will become the Mexican drink known as pulque. In addition to corn, another important crop grown on the small farms of Tesayuca is the Mexican bean. The weeds grow even faster than the beans, so the fields must often be weeded. Beans, like corn, are an important part of every Mexican's diet. The church bell in Tesayuca reminds the farmers when it is time to rest and eat. At noontime, Ramon's family finds it more convenient to eat lunch in the field rather than take time to go home. Their meal is usually corn and beans served with hot sauces made from peppers. It would be better for all of us if we ate more fresh fruit and green vegetables. But for centuries, tortillas and beans have been the basic food eaten by the people of Mexico. The corn Ramon's father planted in the rainy season during the summer is ready for harvesting during the dry season in December. The whole family works together to harvest their crops. Often the neighbors come to help. Ramon's family will repay for this help when the neighbor's fields are ready to be picked. Every part of the corn crop will be used. The ears will be dried and the kernels shelled for food. The inner husk will be used for wrapping tamales, a spiced combination of cornmeal and meat which is cooked by steaming. The stalks will be taken home and fed to the animals. At harvest time, Ramon's little sisters and their mother start home earlier than the rest of the family. She will start preparing the evening meal before the men return from the field. The first duty of a Mexican farm boy is to help his family, and they sometimes keep them out of school. Ramon's younger brother studies his lessons every time he has a spare moment in the field. Today, our government provides at least an elementary education for all of our people. In the result, we see great promise for the future of our country. In Mexico half a century ago, only one person in ten could read and write. Now, all boys and girls must go to school for at least six years. The school in Tesayuca is one of the more than 16,000 village primary schools in Mexico. As soon as they have learned to read and write, many of the children help to teach older people who never had a chance to the school. Today, almost half of our population knows how to read and write. After school, very few of the children in Tesayuca have time to play. Most of them still have work to do. There are always plenty of ways for the boys and girls of our Mexican farm families to help their parents. The work in the fields without machinery or modern tools goes on day after day throughout the season. Our farmers believe children should begin when they are very young to learn the traditional ways of working the land. And the children are expected to share in earning the family's living. This custom of working together helps to make family loyalty especially strong among our farming people.
The families of Tetsuyuka, like those of other villages, often go to and from the fields together. These people are all close neighbors, working at the same tasks and facing the same problems. As a result, there is a strong sense of loyalty among neighboring families and a sense of devotion towards the village which is their home. In the evening, when Ramon drives the cows home for milking, he is returning to his village. His family has lived here for generations. Ramon hopes that someday his children and grandchildren will also call Tesayuca their village. The way of life of the people of this village is typical of life in adobe villages all over Mexico. Women's hands patting tortillas is a familiar sound throughout Mexico. It is so characteristic that it almost means Mexico. The tortilla is the flat bread we make from corn. From the earliest time, the tortilla has been the bread of our country people. Guitar music is popular in Mexico. Though the instrument came originally from Spain, it was adopted by our people who love music of every kind. Grandfather's drink, called pulque, is the favorite of many Mexicans. Pulque is only one of the many products made from the maguey plant. In Ramon's home, most of the furnishings have been made by members of the family themselves. Grandfather built a stove of adobe brick. During the evening, the family usually stays together at home, for the hard work in the fields will begin again early in the morning. The way of life in the adobe village of Tesayuca is much the same as life throughout rural Mexico. In the tradition of their Indian ancestors, these Mexicans make their living from the land by growing corn in the rich volcanic soils of the great central plateau. Many of their small farms are within sight of the mountains which surround the high valley that is called the heart of Mexico. Mm -hmm. 